Hi guys, Josh here and welcome to the first edition of Snapshots. Basically what Snapshots is going to be is it's more of a, a kind of a quick tips for beginners and essential information that you kind of need if you're starting out your film photography journey. And so today we're going to tackle some very important information you need, especially if you're going from digital to film. And that is what is ISO and what is pushing and pulling. Essentially what ISO, ASA is, is basically just the sensitivity of your sensor which can either be digital or film and it's sensitivity to light. With the film, the lower the ISO is, the finer the grain, but obviously you have to usually shoot bright sunny day or somewhere with more light with a flash. But with the higher the ISO, there's going to be more grain. But what that means is you can shoot at night and inside in, in more underlit circumstances. And one thing a lot of people seem to get confused by is film cameras where you can select your ISO because there's a light meter in them. And they find themselves changing the ISO on that between shots on the same roll. And and that that's that's a big no no. No, 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 no. Because your film stock only has one speed. This is Portra 800. It's a 800 ISO film. Even if you change that on your camera from 800 to 1600 to 400, that doesn't change what this film is. What's that changing is what your camera is metering that film as. But what you need to know when shooting film is, yeah, you just have one set ISO for that whole roll. And the only way you can change the ISO is through methods of pushing and pulling, which we're about to get into. But the thing is, that changes every image on the roll. So it doesn't matter what you do if you're shooting film, stick to one ISO. It doesn't have to be what's on the box speed, but the box speed is there to get the most ideal middle gray when in, in the most ideal lighting circumstances. And really, uh, right now in the market, you can get film that ranges from 6 ISO to 3200. And there's heaps, heaps of different options out there. Just because the film is set at that box speed doesn't mean you have to shoot at that box speed. And so now that we've kind of got ISO kind of taken care of, we're gonna get into pushing and pulling. Pushing is definitely the more popular of the two processes, but they both have their benefits and negatives and their reasons for doing it. And basically what pushing and pulling is, it's not so much about the film, but it's about the development of that film. If you're pushing a film, you're kind of developing it for longer. And if you're pulling it, you're developing for shorter. And you're doing this because either you weren't in an ideal circumstance in regards to light, so you need to brighten up your film or lower it, or you want more contrast or less contrast. And we're gonna get into that in just a second. So let's say I was shooting at night, I only had a roll of Tri-X, but I wanted to take some photos still. So I could make the decision to push that roll of film. So let's say I set it at 3200. What I'm doing is I'm underexposing the film because it is a 400 ISO film. But by putting it at 3200, my meter is actually kind of underexposing it. But we're going to bring up that exposure in development. And so when we're pushing a film, we're overdeveloping it. So that means, yeah, you'll be developing it for longer, obviously. What that will do is it will actually bring more detail make and make the highlights in the mids brighter. But if the information is not there on that film, like in your shadows, where, where the blacks are, you're not going to get more information out of where there is no information. And so basically your blacks are just going to get darker, your highlights, your mids are going to get brighter, and that creates more contrast. And so there are benefits to that because obviously sometimes the light's not always ideal, so you can get a brighter image from a low ISO stock. Or if you honestly just wanted more contrast, but also when you push film, it gets grainier from the overdevelopment. So that's that's one thing you need to remember. Is not only is the ISO going to be higher, but yeah, the grain is going to be more pronounced. That can be a negative or a positive, depending on what you're looking for. So that's what essentially pushing is. So now we're going to get into pulling, which is the opposite of that. So with pulling, you're underdeveloping the film. And because you're underdeveloping it, it's actually going to be darker and there's going to be less contrast. So one reason you would pull is if it's way too sunny, but you still want to shoot at a lower ISO, or if you do want those pastel kind of tones and you want less contrast. And nowadays, pushing and pulling processes are usually done at one stop increments. Back in the day, you could do one third of a stop, two thirds of a stop. 
Not so much anymore. There are maybe specialized labs, or if you're doing it yourself, you could kind of do it in that way. But now this is just the basics of it. There's definitely a lot more to go into in regards to it, but this is me kind of just giving you, the beginner, just the main idea of it, so that you can begin to utilize it if you do want to. This is just the first kind of taste of snapshots. This video probably will be a little bit longer than the ones to come. So I'm Josh, this has been Snapshots. Please like and subscribe, turn this post notifications when there's a new episode anyway. Just get out there, shoot some film.